<laughs> better late than never. I'm getting better about not waiting until the last time to set up my cameras. So welcome to day two of this kind of mini project that we're doing to get things done. And yes, yes. Will we finish these earrings and this one pendant today? I don't know, but I might have kept the schedule open for tomorrow just for any, if we have to stream tomorrow to finish this, that's what we're gonna do because it doesn't matter. These have to go into the mail on Monday. So I think it's fine. We will definitely get some things done. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I have the chat. I realized that I had my chat set to subscribers only, which is good. I've opened it up at least until I really get hot and heavy with this. I've opened it up to anyone that follows can participate in the chat today. Just trying to see how the ebb and the flow is. If it's too chatty, you know, I might dial it back to subscribers and we'll see how it goes. So I meant to bring my pieces over. The, I, I've been in the studio for a couple of hours now already because that's just how much I love this place. So I have, remember yesterday, let me go get them and then we'll talk about what we did yesterday and what we're going to do today. Good morning, Peg from Chesapeake. Yes. Welcome this morning, this Saturday, beautiful Saturday morning. So we're going to just switch over. Oop, wrong way. Let's do that. A, B. There we go. We'll see if we like that. Might sketch that over to the other side. Anyway, let me go get the stuff. Got some stuff. There we go. So, and I'm going to take one moment, and I feel like I want that to be on the. Eh. I'm gonna. Can I edit this? Hold on one second. Let me scooch this. What if we put that over there? There we go. Done. Oop. Whatever. Anyway, I've scooched it to the other side. Here, if you remember yesterday, we, we made this pair from scratch. Cut them out, everything. And then we did all of our wires. And while we were there, we've gotten our silver foils textured and ready to go. And then afterwards, well, this morning, I did not actually do anything after I ended the stream yesterday except tidy up the studio. I came in a little early today just to get my head right and have a little private alone time. And I remember yesterday we got our wires on the backs of these things. And I added two more coats. We had just done, we'd added the stuff. Oh, good morning from Armenia. Nuna, I can't read your name. Nuna Malaka Yan. Welcome from Armenia. Who knows what time it is there? So, yesterday, we got our wires on. And this morning, I put two coats of Two more coats of black enamel because that's kind of boring so that's what i did and then i also flipped them over and i put one coat of plain i used number three sawyer flux and this one i didn't let dry long enough and it went a little yellow but that's fine because we are putting silver foil over this so this is just the base coat i figured since you were there for making the silver foil you probably wanted to be a part of whatever that is. So let us see if this works. One, two, there I am again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, I know. So yes, that is the recap. 
and I also I haven't done I haven't found these but I did take a moment and I I kind of just got wrapped my hand around the colors that we're going to be using we might have to do some washing I haven't even discovered if I have these colors washed or not but you know we can kind of deal with that while things are drying slash whatevering so that that is that is everything so I thought we would start with getting our silver foil on so let's just do that I have some clear fire right here I probably want a nice clean brush um, this one I'm gonna take a moment let me wash this brush it's always important always good to start the day with a clean brush and we'll start with you know we'll start with maybe one of these easier ones I say let me just let me get flowers we've got and why is just dirt everywhere dirty dirty so we're just going to start with these little guys right here and I'm not worried I did not anneal even as thin as these wires are when you run them through the rolling mill they get work hardened and they kind of curl up a little bit you could anneal them in the kiln you put them on something super clean with no glass or else they'll glue themselves to that uh, but I'm just a little lazy so I'm not going to because it doesn't really matter I mean it doesn't really it doesn't really matter so there we go and let me just get these in let me get all the stuff that we're doing there we go we have a whole pile and I am just going to start with one of these put in a little glue down pick up one of these little guys they're kind of heavy we might just stick it just like that zoom in a little bit and remember how I said like I didn't anneal them? They may not stick all the way down as long as they're in the right place. Let me zoom in. That's good. Hold on. Solo. Zoom in just a little bit. Sounds good. Focus is auto. I'm going to A1 that just a little bit. There we go. So it doesn't matter that they're not perfectly, as long as they're in the right position. Let me just, oh, and I probably need to press them down with my fingers. And I'm just going to set them. Oh, and you know what I do want to do? Uh, deal with that later. So we're just going to set them on our trivet to dry. Let's just do another one. Good morning, Vilna. Good morning, Vilna. There we go. Good morning, Vilna. So I feel like I have to be on there for that. <laughs> and did I say goodbye, good morning to everyone else? First time chat. Good morning. This is Mirella from Juniper Code Ceramics. Welcome, Mirella. Welcome. I apologize if I don't reply immediately to comments. It's all on my computer screen, which is about four feet from me and I have to, I've got my close-up glasses on. So I can sometimes see that people have commented, but I don't necessarily, I should probably deal with that. So we're just gonna get these little guys in place and no, you don't have to poke a bunch of little holes in your silver foil. Just, you don't have to, it's not necessary. You can just jam them down. And I don't mean to sound exasperated about that, but every single time I do this, somebody is like, oh, you're supposed to poke a thousand little holes. And I'm like, well, that would kind of destroy the look of your silver foil. Um, so. Let 
I'm just going to stick you right there. And this will be the time where I get a million air bubbles because I said that. Oops, let me just jam you on. There we go. You are good. One more of these little guys. Oh, hello, Hydrochronic Ink. Howdy. Howdy. Good morning. We're going to have a busy day. Busy, busy day. And I'm going to put you face down. Just like that. And there we go. We'll let that. So we've got these little guys. Don't like this trivet. That's fine. So we've got these we're going to let dry and I'm going to go ahead right now and go put them under the heat lamp because you really do need to let these dry really well before we put them in. Yes, the flux coat was just sifted on with some clear fire, just clear fire and a nice thin coat. You can see it's not, it's not even enough to make it smooth. It's just enough to have something for the silver foil to grab onto. So we'll do this little guy. I want to make sure they fit. I'm going to say yes. That one looks like that one goes there. Lifted. Oh, a rerun? I'm not sure what you mean. We have not made these yet, but you know, just another pair of earrings, a different color. So, in the sense that there's nothing new under the sun. There we go. Just like that. So, I'll just let you sit. I'll just let you sit over here for a moment. Get you going. And I think that that fits. There we go. Little glue. Just like that. Scoot you down. Excellent. And I'm going to take a moment and go put these under the heat lamp just so they get started to dry. There we go. Now let's go ahead and get this big guy. You can see he went a little yellow. That is, I could probably fix that by putting it back in. I pulled it out a little early, but I decided I don't care because I'm putting foil over it. So, yes. So somebody has asked, what is enamel? It's melted glass. Uh, melted glass on metal. So all of the material this and we'll get to the colored stuff this is just basically ground up glass you can see it's like grains of glass but it comes in different colors and so what we're doing is called cloisonne enameling so we're going to be using our wires we're going to inlay the wires and then put the different colors in between so that is the fast and the dirty of what this is and we're getting started i'm going to put this I feel like I want to go just like that. There we go. But the fun stuff's going to happen today because we're going to get these wires glued on and hopefully we'll get some color added to these pieces. And I'm just going to make sure this is stuck right in the middle. And yeah, it looks like it's, look at it, it's kind of sticking up like that. That's fine. As long as it's stuck down in the middle, I'll smooth it all out after we 
fire it so we don't have to worry too much about that and then our little landscape guys goes just like that just a gentle nudge there we go oh what is up with this i've got why is there like a little nub cut out right there i might have to cut one there we go never mind it's all good crisis averted i'll put this face down and i'm just gonna gently now we're gonna let these dry and while this is all drying, I'm going to go over. We're going to talk about the colors that we're going to use. And hold on, let me see what's going on over here about devices. Let's switch to the reinforced clothes. And let's just go straight over here and solo. There we go. So we're not dropping frames. There we go. And we're gonna do this and that. And we're going to Yes, yes. We're gonna let these dry. And while we're doing that, we're going to stroll over to the enameling bins and see what what is going on. So I'm going to go put these under the light. We probably want to have these at least a couple minutes would be good. Uh, I don't love to rush this thing. We want this glue to dry. So be right back. All right, we're actually going to come over. Hey, now we're gonna go for a little walk. I've got, to remember I picked out these colors because we've got these earrings and this pendant. And we're going to stroll over to, we're gonna go for a little stroll. So. And I apologize if you can't hear me well because I still haven't gotten my microphone situation. Uh, you can probably hear me now because I'm talking to the microphone, but I'm going to be looking for the colors and that's what you're going to be looking at. Thank you. 
Yes, don't you love? Oh, sorry, I need to come up a little bit. Um, That's better. That is better. Let us go here and here. Yes. Yes. Don't, I mean, I love those little storage cabinets because A, they're just perfect to hold these little guys right here. And um, they also, the trays, they actually pull all the way out and they're just like a little plastic tray. I wish they weren't like rainbow colored. I wish they were either black or white, but you can't have. You can't have everything that you want. So I have picked a bunch of colors and we are gonna go over and do some washing. These are, and I grabbed a couple extra that I know I'm gonna want. So that's, we'll probably have to do a little bit more. I know we need, I used up all my lovely, this is my favorite pink, the Aoki. And then also my other favorite blue, we're gonna have to wash that. We kind of have those. I feel like we have this lump. Maybe we're gonna do a little bit of that. N57, can't say no. Maybe we're gonna wash that. And yeah, we're gonna wash six colors and these colors, whatever. So that is going to be what is happening and I think we can go ahead and fire notice I don't have anything on top of that foil I haven't put any enamel it's just a layer of foil over a layer of glass and so we're going to fire it which is going to anneal the foil and also stick the foil down to the glass and then we'll press it all down and add another coat of enamel but we can go ahead and do that next so let's go ahead and solo over there and put it in it's, i prefer to wait just a little longer but time's a ticking so Let us come over here. There we go. There's the kiln. You can see I have it set to 1430 Fahrenheit, which is 776 Celsius. And let's just do it. Let's do it. It's going to take the Sawyer, the number three Sawyer is a little harder, so it has a slightly higher melting temperature. So I'm going to let it really kind of soak for an extra 10 seconds or so. And that is pretty much the plan. And hopefully they won't fly away because I didn't let them dry long enough, but they seem okay. They seem just fine. So while that's doing that, I guess we can just pop things down. Everything's so dirty. Get these ready. No, a little longer. A little longer. And then when these pull out, then we're going to go ahead and do a little washing. So we're just multitasking, but we're not multitasking when something's in the kiln because I can't do that. I'm not that talented. So I'm going to, I'm not walking away, but I'm totally walking away. Let's just see. Let's see.
so exciting. So yeah, an extra couple of seconds. See how it clicked? Boop, boop, boop. You guys keep your eye on that. I'm going to go kind of get the, sift the washing station set up. And we're just going to let that cool on its own. And we've got to get some more colors. We're going to let us do this and then that. There we go. We're going to go over to a different work area because I kind of don't want to wash right here. So I'm going to move this camera over and we're going to go wash. Um, oh yeah, just ramp. Oh, somebody asked about how fast. Just There's no reason to slowly ramp up your kiln. Just take it 100, full throttle it to the temperature that you want. Um, it doesn't make any difference for enamel in any way. Lovely. Let's see, I've got a hole. 
see, will it flip over? No, we're upside down. Oops, as I break it, good. Where are we? Let's just move that over here. Where are we? Let's just solo that. There we go. There we go. Sorry about the upside downness of it. I'm going to exposure auto. It's auto. There we go. Let me go get the other things. Now we have these are ready to go. I've got they're pretty much pre-washed, but these six colors is a bunch of blues. I need to go get more of them. So we're going to take another. We're just, I'm just, you know what? It's all a free for all today. So I'm going to, let's just come over here and follow along as we go to another cabinet. Too. There we go. So I can't see any chat. It's way on the other side of the room. So let me tell you what we're doing. Do we want? No, I'm not going to plug that in. We have some colors. Honestly, I probably can switch these. And yeah, actually, let's come over here. There we go. There we go. Let's see. Nice. So we need some of this, some of this. We've got our Aoki. We've got our lump, which I'm not sure if we're going to do that or not. We've got 546. We've got 174. I picked two others that I know we need. Oh, we don't need this one. And so I just need to go over to my third. I have one more set of drawers that I need to go into. I'm not going to drag you over there. Um, you saw the large. You saw the overflow. You saw the tiny. 
uh, but I have a, a main drawer where I keep everything. So I'm going to go check for these two colors, N57 and 7A. There we go. So, do I want to be in this shot? I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Back. There we go. That's good. It is what it is. So, here we are going to, I'm going to switch this. So, one and two. Oop. One two there you go so you can kind of see what is going on and i didn't find aa i found a good enough i might find aa later i just didn't feel like dealing with it right now so whoo, i'm going to get my sharpie and you're just gonna bear with me while i make to label some jars. Maybe we do want a little light. Will it reach? Will it? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Literally like three feet. Fuck. Never mind. You'll just have to deal with the light. All right, so 546 blue. We'll take that. We've got AOP. We got that. Do I want to do labels? I should do lids while I'm sitting here. Do six. AOP. One seventy four Aqua. You're good. Yeah, I'll do lids later. Nobody needs to deal with lids. N fifty five, I want fresh. You're good. My baby pink. Mm. Delicious baby pink. SL five. I know I have a mess of it over there, but I want fresh. Baby, there you go. Mm, do we want? Do we want to deal with this, or do we not? I thought I had some ground, but you know, maybe if we if we decide we want it, we'll grind it. So I'm gonna set that aside for now. S seven A blue. Green. Let me scooch over. There we go. Seven. And then N57. Nino Mia. Medium. Aqua. Or is that water? Doesn't matter. So we're actually going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, six. One, two, three, four, five, three, seven. I can count. And I am going to go get my mask.
We got water, distilled, of the distilled variety. I've got, and I'm going to put this on as dorky as it is, safety, you know, I don't play around. So, is this triggering? <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll start with the light. We'll start with the baby pink. And whew, let's just make, you know, I'm going to lift this up a lot because it's in my way. And that's better. We got a bucket, we got water, we got our cups. Oh, you know, duh. That's what I forgot, our big cups. I'm doing just, this uses a lot more water, but it's quicker. So, baby, yeah. I don't know what I'm even thinking about. Put those aside. And 55. S7A and 57, 174, Aoki, and 546. There we go. Now we are ready to wash. So we'll start with our pinks. I do like to. How much do I want? Probably that much. Just like that. Move you out of the way. Let's go to our Aoki. for our very pale blue. I want a lot. And let's go over there. Let's do our, I think these are all pre-sifted. Let's find out a little bit. We don't need much. That should be enough. Almost dropped the whole thing. That should be enough. Oh, this one is not sifted. Not sifted. But that's okay. That'll be enough. I bet I had some sifted too. All right, now let us a little closer. There we go, so we can see what's going on. There we go. I think this. Boop, boop. There we go. Water. Let's get this out of the way. And like I say, this doesn't, it uses a lot more water, but it is a lot quicker when you're doing a lot of enamels. You can see that's the one that wasn't sifted. There we go. And, ugh. That's fine. Now you can see which ones were the best sifted. That is good. And then I'm just going to 
pour them over into the bucket. They need a camera person. There we go. Camera elf. And generally I do this a minimum of two times and the maximum of infinity, however much it takes. You can see this one, see how cloudy that is? There we go. Now we're gonna do it again. I bet that stuff is so ready to go. I should have paused and done another coat, but what you're gonna do? Two, three. There we go. And I'm gonna say the Aoki is done. Looks nice and clear. There we go. And that's going to get poured over here. That one's done. Bebe, looks like you're done too. It's nice and clear. M55, you look good. Not that we're not going to do more washing later if necessary. We, we will. You look good. Okay, you look good. Good. One seventy four. You are not ready. Five forty six. We'll do one more look of you. There we go. Now we're gonna just do these two. While those are done, we can put these in M57. We're going to go right in here. There we go. Oh, wish I had a light. It is literally three inches. I could just scooch everything over, but I'm not going to. And I'm just going to go ahead and put regular. I'll label these later. I just don't want them to be messed up. Oh, let's dump these out. Just going to use one more. That looks good. One more for you. And one more for you. I don't want you to be and 55 there we go oh, taking bring lids there we go you can guys can go Does these lids feel like they're too big Excellent. You are S7A. Blue green. There you are. I didn't make very much of you, did I? That's all right. We don't need very much. There we go. Take that. You guys can get dumped. Not sure if what I'm doing. We'll talk about it when I get back if there's any questions about what I'm doing. I'm going to wash this one one more time. The other one is fine. And let's just get you guys a little baby pink. You're getting washed. Get you into your pink. And I'm not usually quite this 
herky jerky sloppy doppy about this, but you know, here's a little pink over there. Now our 546 blue. Interesting. Last but not least, I'll just have to do for now. You are good. There we go. Do some more. And before I move along, I'm going to wipe this area down because this is all leaded enamel. And once this all dries, it's going to turn into dust and then end up everywhere. So I'm going to wipe things down. going to take our bucket and go put that under the sink let it settle and now we are ready to I'm gonna go ahead and I don't even know what camera is what We'll solo this one. Now, we're going to head back, and th that was the last field trip of the day. Well, unless we get to grinding and polishing, which at this rate, we'll be grinding and polishing tomorrow, but that's fine. So, let's come over here. Now we're going to do this thing where we flip over. Are you ready? Come on. There we go. Come on. We flip. Wait. Oh, come on. Let's let's switch over there. <laughs> now, that one. Come on, flip it. That's lovely. All right, let's just regroup. Let's let's just regroup for a moment and figure out. Oh. What's in the cups? Yes. If you're at all interested in actually what I'm doing and want tutorials, let me guide you to my Vimeo channel. I have over 120 step-by-step -step tutorials which explain the process of exactly what I'm doing within the, there's projects that you can follow along with or not. There's really simple basic things and that is I would hi if you're really interested in, in learning enamel, I would definitely guide you to my Vimeo channel for sure. This is just kind of what I'm doing. And like, this isn't meant to be all of that. I mean, I'm answering questions obviously, but it's not a tutorial. So um, that being said, of course I can answer your questions, but for like in detailed stuff, check out 
my Vimeo channel. You will not be disappointed. All the questions will be answered. Let's see if, um, why is it backwards? Hold on. Let's see. Let's get rid of that. And hmm. flip it. All right, I know it's upside down. Let me just take one moment. Oh, no, no. We don't want to do a selfie. Or do we? Hold on, maybe that would help. Selfie. Oh, I don't want to be in it. But let's flip it. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Is that better? Nope, I guess everything's just going to be upside down for fucking ever. How wonderful. So... Oh, my most expensive enamel powder. Let me just regroup with that. I don't know why we're upside down and I can't. Let's. Um, you know what? I'm going to have to take it out of. I'm going to pull this out. Sorry, I don't mean to be fussing so much. There we go. Hold on. There we go. Is that better? Oh yes, I fixed it. Sorry, I had to pull out my camera. All right, back to the, there we go, there we go. <sighs> Sorry, I almost lost my mind. Questions, what does your most expensive enamel powder cost? Generally, the most expensive enamel powders this might be my most expensive. This is an unavailable Aoki. This is a discontinued Japanese. But the enamels that are made from gold, which would be a lot of reds, some pinks, a few purples, those are the most expensive for sure. Blues, greens tend to be very budget friendly. But pinks, purples, reds are a lot more expensive. So that is... That is that. Now, let's, we've got our enamels pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna set them aside for now and we're going to revisit what's going on with our actual pieces. Let me go get them. got all discombobulated with all that moving around so we're just gonna stay put for a while one's <laughs> gonna not go anywhere so let us get these out of the way for now and we're going to make sure that we got it real clean we're going to sift we're gonna press we've got our well, our foils mostly fired down we're going to Make sure that they're pressed all the way down, and then we're going to sift a coat of, this is a French enamel, number three Sawyer Flux for silver. And this is kind of one of my new favorite go-to fluxes. It's a little bit harder, which means it has a higher melting temperature than some other enamels, but that's fine because it is the base coat. Remember, you want harder on the bottom, softer on the top, if you cared about that, but honestly, if you're a beginning enamel artist, please do not stress out about hard versus soft. Um, generally, if you're buying one kind of brand of enamel, they'll all pretty much play well together, unless they're specifically labeled hard or soft. Don't worry about it. Um, this wasn't labeled specifically hard, but whatever, it is. So it's like the rule that doesn't make any sense. And so we're going to get a sifting thing. I've got, I saved my, that's my clear, Fire. I do want to wash my brush one more time just because now we're we're getting to the point where anything that goes wrong is going to be is going to be you know apparent so clean the brush
11 o'clock. And, oh, a sifter. I saved this nice clean sifter from this morning. And get that ready to go. And I'm going to pull up just a little bit. There we go. That you can see what I'm seeing here. And we'll start with the easy peasy ones, which are these little guys here. Let me dry my fingers. Expansion of the glass. The, um, it's not the expansion, it's the melting temperature. Hard, hard enamels have a higher melting temperature. Soft enamels have a softer melting temperature. And generally, from my experience, Japanese enamels tend to have a softer melting temperature than the French or the the English or the German tends to be a little bit harder. That doesn't mean they don't play together, but you know, it's just something to think about. So I'm going to press this down with my finger. I'm going to grab a toothpick and it doesn't matter that you can kind of see the texture of the glass underneath because that'll go away. But I do want to make sure there's no air bubbles, so I'm using my fingers, which are dry, to press it down. And I'm, if I have anything stuck up, I'm just going to use that. Just like that. And then I just am going to do a nice, oh, was I going to do pink for this? No, no. Too much work, too much work. We're just going to do this. And it's nice dusting. There we go. That's lovely. We'll put you oh, we'll put you over there. And then we're just gonna do that for all of our little friends. Press them down. Make sure there's no air bubbles. This is your opportunity to push out any air bubbles. And I feel like I was being a jerk about the whole Vimeo thing. I totally want to answer questions. I was frustrated because of my upside down camera. <laughs> I'm like, and then I'm like answering questions. It's so much. So please, please ask all the questions that you want. I did not mean to be a total jerkwad. Um, it's a partial. You might not believe it, but I am actually pretty much an introvert. It's funny, like I need to spend, does this count as me spend? It doesn't count as me spending time by myself. There we go. There we go. Now these, oh, one more of these little guys. And That is good. Press you down. And I'm making an extra pair of these pink earrings because quite frankly, I want to wear them. I want, I want a pair for me. So this one, I'm going to start in the middle and just push it down. My finger. Your finger is a great tool. There we go. Oh, stream has intermittent eruption. Oh, interruptions. Oh, well, I am on, maybe I need to just turn this. Let me solo this if that helps. Um, it says it's a good bit rate right now. Um, so my apologies. I am on Wi-Fi that I have no control over. So that is what it is. And you know, maybe I fussed with my light too much. There we go. Let me 
me just make sure my exposure seems fine. Eh, wrong. And just press that. Yeah, we're not finishing these today. We'll probably, we'll get the color on today, but we'll do grinding and polishing tomorrow. If, if you wanna join, I promised I would do this, this entire set from start to finish. So if you want to join me, I will come back tomorrow because I'm not gonna rush. Um, there's just, it's not worth ruining something just to get it done through some set parameter. There we go. So we've got that one. Oh, and then we've got this big one here. Now this, these larger ones, see how they're sticking up that wire? I mean the wire that we wanna start in the middle and just gently work our way around. So I'm gonna press it. Because you don't want any little creases. Sometimes you get one, but that's, there we go. If you're careful, you can just And that nubbly texture will go away in the in the fire, and that's just when the glass underneath remelts, it'll smooth itself out. Just like that. That's good. All right. Let's put this on. And I'm gonna make sure this one gets, I'm gonna put this right under the heat lamp. I don't want this one to go. Oh, well, somebody has, oh, flux just means, and it's so irritating, and flux means clear enamel. Any enamel that is clear is called flux. Not to be confused with the flux that you use when you're soldering, completely different things. I don't know why they use the same. Fondant, I think is the French word. So we should just call it fondant, which sounds, you know, very French, I guess, but just clear enamel. Flux is clear enamel. And there's an entire, I could write a treatise, I could write a thousand page treatise about the pros and cons of fluxes. So it would be dry reading or would, no, it would be like, you'd be on the edge of your seat. Like what? Oh my God, I had no idea about fluxes and how temperamental they are. I'm gonna go put this under the heat lamp because I really wanna make sure this gets dry. Now, I think we'll go, I think we can go back to this. If everyone is good, we'll go one and two. There we go. What does the hardness of enamel affect? I only know about hardness for jewelry solder, but that's a completely different thing. That's not really, it's just belting temperature. Just remember that when things are cooling, they are gonna have a different cool down. So you can always put soft things on top of hard things because they'll be fine but if you put a hard enamel which is a higher melting temperature over a soft enamel when they're cooling down when they're expanding they will crack you'll get a crackle effect which can be very nice if that's what you want but generally you don't want that unless you're going for that look so but honestly don't quite literally i shouldn't even have mentioned it in until you it's like 30th on the list of things you should concern yourself about. Um, uh, unless you actually get cracking, you probably, the reason you'll learn about it is at some point you're gonna run into something that has cracked and you're like, why on earth did this crack? And then you'll, then you'll know, then you'll know. But generally speaking, unless it's specifically labeled a hard or a soft enamel, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And it could be that this Sawyer number three is 
or if it's called a, a foundation, that's another word for hard. It means to only put it on the bottom. Use it as a foundation. So, there we go. There's that. We're getting closer. One more. And then we'll start mixing our glue. So we're going to fire this. This is, here's the plan. The next step is once these are dry, I should have put those under the light. I really, really want to make sure these are enough, dry enough. We will get our glue mixed up and we will get our wires glued into place. And then we'll get to color. So it's 11.15. Yeah, I, we'll definitely get to the color, which is quite frankly, the best part. So I'm gonna go put these under the heat lamp We're gonna just take a tiny moment to clean up. Oh, hey, welcome. Welcome, Andra McEwen, my distant relative from ages ago. Welcome. And jewelry flux does have glass in it, right? Yeah, no, flux is just enamel, glass. It's all glass, but just clear glass with no added coloring. So we're going to do a quick little tidy up while everything is drying. And I'm not sure, do we need any more clear fire on the day? No, no, maybe I'm going to save it just in case I need some. And I do like to take a moment before, because I've sifted this and I don't want this to be contaminated with bits of stuff from miscellaneous trivet wear. So I take a moment, I spread it all out and I look and make sure there's no specks of black and I just take a moment and there we go. If you ever take a, a class well, in like a craft center. If you take one of my classes, you're gonna get my materials, but you definitely always wanna maybe bring your own flux because in a classroom situation, you know, these clear or these any kind of light enamel tends to get completely contaminated with flux of other colors, and just, you know, detritus. That's good enough. I'm almost, Probably shouldn't even have sifted that large of an amount, but that is good. Now, we're letting that dry a little bit longer. So, you know what? Ooh, let me just get the brush on the Let's go ahead and mix up our glue while we're waiting for everything to remember we did our wires here's the wires that we made yesterday they're pretty straightforward this shouldn't be that hard to oh, well we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see i don't think i've ever glued wires in place on video so we'll see no oh, maybe i have we'll see if i get all nervous and twitchy twitchy on twitch so We've got our that, and I'm going to mix up. We don't need this flux anymore. And we're going to use some. This is just, remember the clear fire? That, this is the, the clear fire glue, which is a really thin water-based acrylic medium. It's a great glue. It is takes forever to dry and it's not quite as sticky so when I'm gluing my wires down I I'll use this for certain applications like real easy things 
not anything we're going to do today because I don't want to have to wait an hour for something to dry because that's a lot of small talk. It's a lot of small talk. So we're going to be using a product called a blue stick, which is quite frankly, it's Elmer's glue with some blue coloring added. So if you can't find this stuff, feel free. It's, you know, you need the non, you know, like you need the school glue, the stuff that is acrylic based if it has any kind of a weird odor to it don't use that that probably would not be wonderful and so we're going to get oh i have to get a cup because this is a little too thick see how it's really thick we're going to thin it out you know maybe while we're waiting for it to dry we could do a little we could grind that forget me not that lump enamel so i'm just going to get one of my little cups a little and we don't need much so i'm just going to give it a little stir creamy mm. and we'll just put some right in there oh and i need to get some more distilled water so that should be enough to get all our little pieces glued on and this glue you'll see it's just to temporarily hold things in place it'll burn away in the kiln so we don't have to worry about that but i do want to get some i have to open anything and distill there we go Some fresh distilled water. You can hang out over there. And we'll just get, and it's just about 50 50. And you'll see what, what we're doing in a moment, what, what the deal is with this stuff. Let's just give it a mix. And then. Yeah, I'm stalling because I want to make sure that everything has a chance to dry because things go a little yellow if you don't let them dry properly. So yes, I am officially stalling. And I'm going to stall again after we glue this stuff on too. So there's, there's a little bit of downtime. So that is good. We got our glue ready to go. And all right, there's nothing to it. Let us go and fire those things. So let's solo over there. Oops, solo. And let's go to the kiln. Oh, unstable. Huh? Well, what you gonna do? And again, my kiln is set for 1430 Fahrenheit, 776 Celsius. And we'll just let those coast along until they are done. Probably right when it gets back up to 1430. A little extra because remember this is a little bit harder. So has a slightly higher melting temperature.
Yeah, it's, <laughs> I got nothing, I got nothing. That's not a dumb, that is not a dumb question at all. You can definitely, you've seen enamel vases, vases, those beautiful Chinese and Japanese enamel vases. So yes, remember, it's not going to drip off this cap capillary action, surface tension. I don't know. I've done, it's on my bullet, my bullet, my bucket list to do some sort of an enamel vessel, right? I've, I've done bracelets and you know what? Oh, I'll show you the bracelet. Oh, darn it. I have it. I'll show you one of my bracelets while things are cooling. So, but that's kind of 3D because you have to do things upside down. Now, now, 
we are these are well these are the ones that are cool enough to handle the other ones are cooling and so you can see you can't really see the texture of the fine silver foil that will reveal itself at the end Ah, anyway, we have oh, a first time chat. Crash. Oh, hold on. We have our first spam. We have our first spam comment. How exciting. Hold on one second. That's just so exciting. Whatever, I don't know how to deal with it. So doesn't really matter. Just there we go. Ignore any comments. I'll figure out how to deal delete them later. So we've got these little pieces and I bet Oh, I was gonna well you know what, we'll do the show and tell when these things are drying. Let me go get the other pieces and then we're going to start gluing. Gluing, 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 gluing. I guess all chat is better than a new chat. How are we doing? And They're still hot, so I brought the whole thing over just to cool them down a little bit on the steel plate will help them to cool. So they are ready to go. Now, let us talk about gluing. Let me get... Oh, thank you for reporting it. I, I'm still learning the ropes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I was like, I thought I could just maybe there'd be a button that'd be like, you know, stop this person from chatting. Um, and I've read like, you know, that's why, because when I was doing multi, I was doing multi streaming from YouTube and Twitch at the same time, but I could not see any of the comments on YouTube. And that was a terrible mistake. So I'm just streaming in one location and at a time oh that's fine now i'm going to get we've got these pieces and i'm going to go ahead and solo this up so i can get in here and zoom in just a little bit right so he, oh and i you know what i want my oh, it sounds terrible but i'm going to grab my microscope because i need to be able to see what's going on so give me one moment Bring that over. There we go. That's fine. Oh, hold on. There we go. There we go. If you're wondering, this is my jewelry microscope right here. You can't even see it. Really a nice piece of equipment and helps my old lady eyes my old lady eyes so you can see what is going and we're just going to take a moment there we go make sure that is good and i'm going to go ahead and lock the focus so my hand doesn't keep doing that there we go Oh, it is what it is so now we are ready we'll start with we'll start with the easy things which are these little lotus blossom things 
kind of just make sure that is where we are. So we have our glue right here and it's all mixed up and we have our wires here. Oh, and we want to make sure that, oh, see, I would have made a big mistake. One, we want one of each, one with the signature on the back and one without. So let's, I think that will be good. That will be good. Or else we'll have the wrong thing happening. So I'm going to just take a moment and actually I kind of want to switch up and have these over here. There we go. I like to kind of see what's going on. It does take a while. So I'm just going to one at a time. I think that's good. Just gently. I'm going to have to trim as I go. So buckle in everybody. This is not it, just as you think, oh, things are going to go fast. It's not. Let me just turn that one a little bit. There we go. It's just a certain amount. Because remember also we've shaped these so they're not perfectly flat. You know. So it's always the first, the first piece of wire. There we go. That wants to be a little troublesome. And I'm just going to, honestly, I might do all of them at the same time. Let's just dip you in. That's good. Just like that. Oops, watch my, sorry about that. I can just trim you right. That. And what's going to happen is when we put this, ooh, and because we're not going to let, I usually, I like to let this glue dry a long time. Honestly, I try to do my days so I glue at the end of the day and it could literally just sit overnight uh, because this glue tends, it does tend to turn into a little bit of a tiki torch in the kiln, which I don't like. It's fine. I mean, it's, there's no problem. If something catches fire in the kiln, the only thing you have to worry about is don't open the kiln door. Don't feed it any oxygen. It will go out on its own. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. But I, don't, I still don't like it. I don't like it. It tweaks some really primal thing in me that I don't. And I have a... I don't like it, so... So I'm going to tweak this. Speaking of tweaking, get that pressed down. There we go. And then my fingers in the way. Just perfect. This one probably needs a little trimming. bastard. Fine. Although I guess it's kind of exciting I get my first spam comment means there's like it's not just I don't know my Facebook my mom and dad watching they're not oh my god I don't think they're watching but you know you know it means things maybe people are watching that wouldn't normally be interested in this sort of thing yeah and yeah I'm fussing with these a little more but I just want them to be just so I'm going to show that bracelet later and the bracelet that I'm going to show you when these are drying 
quite literally, I probably spent three, two, three days gluing wires onto that bracelet. It was, you'll see, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see the bracelet. It's a lot. It was a lot of gluing. So we'll just get you in here. Still perfect. That was nice. This is the moment when I'm teaching classes and the students get to the gluing of the wires. I learn what sort of what sort of character they have. And also I learn I, I know immediately if this is something they will ever revisit again. Because this is takes a steady hand and some patience. So good. Those two are glued, and I'm going to go ahead and put them under the lap. We'll get them started with the drawing. And so one pair down. I know that's not in focus, but, and then this next pair coming right up. picked up some trivets while I was over there. Now I'm going to just continue along with these two ones. Okay, and we're starting with the easy. I think that one is good. Let's just see. Are we, our bitrate's still poor, but quite literally, what are we going to do? Mine as well. Make it more interesting. So we'll start with this. Just like that. You know what I'm going to do? Just Set it and then scooch it. That's good. Oh. Set it. Oop. Scooch. Again. Let's get you. Apparently, there's like. <laughs> Hopefully, everyone's okay. Boop, boop, boop. This is kind of a main drag here. Gonna tip over. I'm gonna lose my patience. Am I gonna lose my cool? Oh, hold on. Maybe because I see a fleck of black that I don't like. Hold on. Let me get a tiny brush. What are you doing? Why is ugh? What what is that? Just unacceptable. Scooch you down. Fine. I guess it'll be in the darker. It's fine. Not cool. Yeah, and you can't rush. <laughs> you cannot rush it. So oh, it's like, what's that tag? Everyone's like, oh, it's slow art. This is like extra 
extra slow R. There we go. Put you guys down. And nothing will bother you more than having poorly done wires later on, because you're going to have to stare at them for the rest of the project. Those wires are going to be accusing you of not having given them the care and attention that they were wanting. bent funny give me a little bit more glue there we go not too much just you can use too much of this glue there's always a trade-off always and this glue I find it's nice it's easier to use but you have to be a lot more careful because sometimes it doesn't always burn away as cleanly as you need it to so there's no right answer there's always just there we go. There, sweet, sweet. Now I will do, you know what, we gotta get started with this guy, because I'm gonna do get his swirls in and let them dry before I do the interior swirl. So let me go put this guy. These guys can go under the heat lamp. And we're gonna kind of multitask. And I'm kind of dreading, no offense with this seems like it'd be the easiest, this landscape piece it is not blah so there's so much fussing that's going to happen with that so let me go put these under the lamp And these are all, I'm not gonna lie, these are, these are kinda easy <laughs> pieces. These are straightforward, simple designs that I'm doing, I'm saving. I've gotta do one more Carolina Wren and another of the Sacred Forest necklaces that are due next Friday. And you know what? I'm gonna do them by myself without an audience. So we're done with these. So let's grab these little guys over here and I'm gonna go ahead and just get the main elements in here first and then we'll start with this little guy give it to me there we go and remember these things are the other irritating thing that you're just about to learn is these pieces are domed and these wires are not domed. So that's going to be more complicated. Let's just get you just like that. But I'm gonna let these dry before I try to do this interior nonsense. Let's start with you. Oops, get down there, buddy. And then let's get you in place. Mm -hmm. Poke up just. That's nice. I like that. It's very lyrical. Let's get you. So I feel like I should get extra credit because I usually use my left hand a lot more, but I can't because the camera is in the way. So I'm quite literally pull you out. Oh, see, I knew you were gonna get, you were too perfect. You were too, perfection like that was not meant to be in this world. Pull you down. Let's pull you down. Just, 
gently. That'll be good. Let's leave you be for now. Get you going. That's good. That'll be good for now. Let's get you. That's a lot of glue. There we go. Set you first, clean off, and just scooch you to. Yes, we, <laughs> it's a lot. You will, when you go to my Etsy store, hold on. Um, I can't make that happen, can I? You'll see that the prices reflect. I feel like the prices reflect the time and the, all right, so we're gonna let this one dry. I'm gonna just set him up over here so I don't knock him. In fact, I might go put him under the heat lamp because I don't wanna, I want to be able to squeeze all those little curly cues in between so I'm gonna let these this actually dry and then that will be a lot easier so I'm going to go put you under a heat lamp and then we will deal with these little guys which are also gonna be pain in the butt pain in the patchouli Now, let same thing goes. I'm gonna get this main. Remember, I feel like if you don't remember where we're going, we've got we've got this one halfway done. Those are all done, and we're gonna do this one next, which is also. I, I was kind of starting with the easy stuff, so let me just grab something so we can. There we go. Hold things steady as it were. There we go. Just like that. And let's grab these little guys. Landscape dudes, you can go. And I'm just going to get the two main elements in place. Let's see. Oh, I've got glue on my tweezers. Let me clean that off. Oh, and I do think I want to trim that a little bit. Let me just pick that wire up and see, I am gonna, I am going to bend it just a little bit. And let me hold it, I know, just a little bit. And I'm gonna trim it just a little bit. And yeah, I know it's not, Let's see how that looks. Well, it's not too terrible. All right. These are problematic. These are problematic because they're going to want to tip over because it's the shape of the thing wants to tip this little guy over. That's fine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jam this little leaf. Hopefully, will help hold that one guy up. Let me jam you in there. Use my finger. Come on, buddy. Actually, I should go the other way. Let me open you up a little bit. There we go. Well, there we go. Oh, we did it, and then we knocked it out of the way. Let me get a little bit more glue. And then I'll trim it after we fired it. I'll trim that interior just Don't love it. Yeah. There we go. Alrighty. You know, some days it's just more of a pain in the butt. That's that's good. That's good. Let's just push you down. That's good. 
gonna let that dry. We'll trim that little guy later. You're fine. Let's get this nonsense piece. Let's just set you. Oh, you're gonna be just fine. Oh, you're like, oh, I'm perfect. I'm not gonna be trouble. Oh, but I am too long by like three millimeters, but that's fine. I'm gonna trim you. This one is perfect. Oh, you know, maybe that's what I was doing wrong. No, no. I'm just thinking. You can just hang out. Yeah. A little. one was easy as no problem this one is a little bitch there we go all right we'll let you guys draw you guys hang out someplace else let's get our friends this is yeah, this looks like it's going to be so easy because it's just like, oh, it's just a bunch of little squiggles. Oh, no problem. But uh, there's so much finessing with these because it will look, this is one that is going to look so nice when it's done, but you're like, it's kind of, it's very impressionistic. It's a landscape. It's really all about the blending. So we'll start with that piece looks good. And just... Honestly, maybe if I decide that it's not going to be, you know what, I feel like I psyched myself out. So if I say this one's going to be the easiest, maybe it will be. Let me just hang out like that. That's good. Let's get little background squiggles in here. Fine. Same thing goes. I'm going to let this dry before I get those interior doodads. Let's just set you. Yeah, I can trim these. I don't mind that they're over overhanging a little bit because we'll trim them. And let's see what's happening here. Definitely going to trim these. I obviously made it way too long. Let's just trim you here. You're going to get trimmed right there. Maybe even a little more. There we go. You're kind of like a little valley. That's not bad. Scoot you up just a little bit. Just good, good, good. Huh, we got a lot going on over here. You know, like, there's too much going on on that side. I'm going to put this wire in and then maybe. No, I think. I'm going to cut that right there. Right like that. Changing things up a little bit. That's allowed. I'm gonna just kind of come. That's good. There we go. There we go. Now I'm gonna let these dry because I don't want to fuss with them. So we're gonna go put these under the, the heat lamp. Let's just. And then we'll revisit our other two. What time is it? It's just about noon. We're making good progress. So let me go get our friend, the quad swirl. Now remember this guy, he 
should be a little bit dry. Let's double check. Yeah, this one's still a little wet, but that should be just fine. I should be able to get my curly cues in there. And this is one of those instances where I'm going to switch to a different kind of glue. Remember our clear fire that we saved? This is just because there's not very many places for these to wander off. And this is just going to be, I don't want it to be super, super gloppy. So we're going to use this glue. That's all I'm going to say about it. And let's see, let's start. You might even need to make a little dot right there. Just going to fill these little guys in, get a little dot. If we have to make more curly cues, we will. Should have made, I usually make extra, but I didn't. Let's just set you. Go. Sweet, sweet. Now this guy, I gotta be more careful. Yeah, I feel like I need one or two more curly cues. That's all right. I'll put you right in there. Let's see where we are as far as this goes. Maybe we'll have extra from this side, but may not use as many. Now you just tap on up there. Let's get a little dot. Just like that. And one more dot. Right over there? No, scoot you. In. Now we just need one of these. Oh yeah, that'll do. That's good. Now we can use one of these extras over here. Let's see. We might want to trim it a bit. Tuck it a little bit. Oop, where'd you go? There you go. There you are. I'm going to just trim you real short. Just put you right there. Just like that. And then I'm going to make one circle. I've got this little piece of silver and I'm going to make a very tiny dot because I want a dot in that upper one. I, I didn't know if I was going to have room, but I obviously did. It's just. Make a polka dot. Trim you. And then you've got a nice piece to go right there. Perfect. Nice, that one is done. No more dots. Nope, I think that's good. Everyone has a nice dot. So that one's gonna go, that one's done. <laughs> yeah, no, there's that half, there's that point where you're halfway on and halfway off. Like, this is a perfect instance, and you're like, I don't even know what the design is anymore. I've completely lost it. So I'm going to go put this under the heat lamp, and then we'll finish this one, and then the landscape, and then it's smooth sailing. brought our friends the landscape back. Now these guys always make me a little crazy. 
So we're just going to just going to take a moment. There we go. I'm trying to decide. You know what? I'm gonna kind of do that. We'll do this side first. Get the glue. Let's see if I can see the glue. Get you guys out of the way. One potato. Two potato. And this particular pair of earrings I fucking love. I love them. I make them in so I make them in three colors. The ruby red on the gold. Really nice. This is classic style. This is gonna be shades of really vivid greens on a really pale blue. It's just a really refreshing aqua and green color variation. I also make it in cobalt blue. Yum. Cobalt blue. See, I feel like I want to put that. I like to have the ends facing the interior. There we go. I feel like I want to scooch everything up. There we go. Scooch up a little bit. Everyone wants to scooch up we go. Scooching up. There we go. A little bit of wiggle room. Then get you just like that. Let's see. Just a little bit. Think about it too much. There we go. One more, one more. But see how I glued that one down? When you're trying to, it's so important to just get one piece glued down so it's not scooching around and then things aren't shifting all over. It's hard to do that when you're only working on a single piece. So. I keep meaning to make a video about my 10 piece, my 10 pieces of advice for a beginning enamelist. One of them is don't work on one piece at a time. It doesn't have to be 20 pieces, but work on three pieces at a time. Oh, that one's terrible. Hold on, let me rearrange. I want, you know what? I feel I'm gonna switch these. This one is a little bit more delicate. I'm gonna pull you down a little bit. And I see a dot. Get out of there. There we go. Scoot you down. Scoot you down. There we go. And then you have a little bit more space. Up there. One, two, three. Do I want one more? No. I always go through this thing of wanting to add an extra leaf but it actually just ends up looking a little crowded. So I'm gonna move you out of the way so I don't knock you. And I'm gonna go put you under the lamp. There we go, we're getting close. Now, oh, now is a good time to remind everybody if you are thinking that you might want to subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. When I get to 100, I know I'm only at 31, whatever, maybe we'll never get there, that's fine. But when I get to 100 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway, a pair of earrings, or cufflinks. Maybe, maybe it'll just be whatever you want. Who knows? We'll see. But I got to get to 100. So that might take a little bit of oh, time. I'm gonna, oh, this, I put some glue here. I'm just gonna quickly make myself, my job a little easier. So I'm gonna get these glued. There we go. There we go. Now we'll start on 
this. No, we'll start on the difficult side. So I don't feel like I have it. I feel like I want to adjust this. I'm going to adjust this. Didn't like it. Give it to me. Let's, we're re-gluing this one. It just wasn't good. I wasn't, didn't have enough space. So what I'm going to do... Don't be afraid to unglue things. <laughs> I just want to make sure I have enough space for my leaf. Get down there, lovely. And then you can be, let me open you up a little bit. all in. There we go. Tuck you in and now you a little bit. Put a little pile of glue over there. There we go. Just perfect. Now we just gotta get these last little leafy leaves. One more and then some fussing and then an endless amount of fussing there we go we'll be able to pinch these a little bit after we've fired them there we go that's good hold on let me scooch you all right, we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go put this under the heat lamp. Then we're just gonna do our last little bits and then we're done, 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 done. Not done with the pieces, but ready to add the color. There we go. Oops, almost knocked that over. Just a few little curly cues on this. Oh, oh, I'm speaking of knocked over. There we go. That's all right. That piece had tipped over. Let's just put you back. Right like that. Now, let's start with these curly cues. It's hard to see sometimes what's going on. I'm going to do a dot. Tighten this curly cue up. Oh, we definitely need another curly cue. That's all right. You know, I'm going to put this going the other way. We don't want all the curly cues facing the same direction. And just go tuck in. Okay. Give our 
add your one over there. Should be good. Add a tiny little guy. Right there. Or, yeah. Nope. Will you squeeze in there? There we go. Yes. And let's just grab you guys. I told you that these little landscapes are small, but you see, even when we get to the color, there's probably going to be 15 colors in this little landscape. It's, because that's the whole point is the different shades of blues and greens and there's some pink they're gonna be pretty so let's just get these little guys there we go and one more can we fit this in there oh almost lost it I'm going to trim it. Just. And tighten you up a little bit. There we go. You'll squeeze right in there. That's going to push you down a little bit, too. There we go. That's good. And then one dot. One dot will do you. All right. Hold on, I'm going to put one, one more little dot, and then I'll fuss with that, and then we got to get those little swirls in the sky, and then we're done, 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 done. Done. There we go. Now let's get our little cap on. Sweet little... Oh, 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 I got glue on my tweezers. are getting too sticky. I tipped over. Probably means you're going to tip over in the kiln as well. Hold on. Take you. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Now, two curly cues. Let's get this one. I know it's hard to see what's going on. It's hard for me to see what's going on. But once we start getting the color on, things will... There's our curly cue, and then I think one curly cue on this side. The, the wind is just sweeping up and hitting. I'm going to trim that. By a lot. Trim it by a lot. There we go. Maybe. We'll put it in. We can only yank it out if we don't like it. That's good. That'll do. Alrighty. <sighs> Done. Done with the gluing. Let me go put these under the lamp. And we're going to regroup and talk about the next step. Now, now, now. Ooh, let's see if there's a question. 
Blah, blah, blah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I see that you visited my Etsy store. <laughs> thank you for those kind words. Now, you can see I have a pile of... That's my pile of glue. I'm going to get rid of all this tape. And quite frankly, I want to give those wires an opportunity to dry. So we're going to... What could we be doing? I could... We don't need this glue, but if I, I'm just going to put it behind me because whenever I think I'm done with the glue, I come up with a reason of needing it. So let me just tidy up. Oh, no, I know what we're going to do. We're going to grind that. We're going to grind some lump enamel because I only have that one color in lump. So hooray. That's something to do. Um... Uh, I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll save it. It's just going to live over there. Who wants to grind some lump enamel? I know I do. I do. I do. So let's let me get my mortar and pestle. There's that. Let me also take a moment. Let's move you out of the way. There. And actually, let me take this for a moment solo so I can adjust the focus. Auto. And also, I don't like the white balance. I'm going to use a gray card real fast. Oop. Gray card. Oop. There we are. Did it work? Yes. Good enough. We have, this is a beautiful, I can't remember the material. It is not agate, but it is incredibly expensive so um not a london um, aluminum not a, uh, whatever it's some fancy new composite so So, while that is all happening, let me put that over there. As convenient as it is to get our enamels in powder form, I'll just powder form. This is finely ground. It's nice. It's not. Sometimes, especially if you care about longevity, it's just really, really nice to get your enamel in lump form. This is called lump enamel. And if you want this enamel to last longer than your lifetime or my lifetime, go for the lump because this will not deteriorate in your lifetime. The way that, say, a really fine powdered ground enamel will deteriorate because of all of the moisture. I live in a particularly yeah, I live in a particularly humid environment. But apparently there is a piece of lump enamel in the British Museum from the fifth century. And I bet if I got my hands on it, I could grind it in and use it in my enamels. And I bet it would be good as new, good as the day it was created. So that is what we're gonna do. So I need a few other things to make this turn this into powder. I need some sifters and I need a little plastic baggie so I don't get it everywhere because it's one of those things that, and I want a mallet would be nice. We got a mallet and, oh no, this is glass. This is just regular glass enamel. It's just in lump form. So we're going to break it down. And I had actually bought a whole mess, and it wasn't inexpensive. I bought this color as the powder. It's gorgeous. This color is gorgeous. And it was contaminated with white flax, and I have eight ounces of it. So I went ahead and purchased the lump form of it because it 
some colors are worth it. Some colors are worth it. So let me go get a few other things and ooh, we should, maybe we'll grind two colors, we'll see. There we go. So we're ready. We're ready. We've got some sifters, which I'm going to have to sift through, figure out which ones I want. I just grabbed a bunch. And oh, I also grabbed a couple other different varieties of lump enamel. This is actually Mikado orange. It's a vivid orange enamel. Look, it looks clear, but it turns. I don't have the. Let me go. I'm going to grab the sample. But yeah, I am making things take. I'm just giving that some time. This color is this enamel. When you grind, when you fire it, this is made of gold. There's something about the direction of the molecules and the gold particles. They align when they get reheated and they turn into this beautiful shade of orange. They also have, this is also a gold pink. Let me get that out of the way. We're not going to grind those. I just wanted to do some show and tell. This is also another kind of lump enamel. This is a blushy pink. This is another one that's made of gold. Gold, and it'll be, this is it. I need to remake this. This will be a blushy, pale pink color. And I am going to be, over Christmas, if you join me over Christmas, we're going to be making sample strips on Christmas Day. <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing. So we'll be doing that and then finally oh, actually this is the same kind this is just more so you can see it comes in all different bits and they're all very beautiful I could just thumb through them all day but we don't I mean we could we could so yeah yeah so let's go ahead and I now I feel like I've cluttered up the desk too much. So we're going to lift up and get this out of the way. We're going to pick a let's, let's not have that. Let's get a good piece. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Pop this. We'll see how much that is. Maybe we'll do two pieces. We'll see. And it's going to get everywhere. I'm not a great, I don't do a ton of grinding of my own enamels, so I'm just going to have to bear with me. I've got a sifter here, 200. I'm going to do an 80 mesh. I don't think I want a, so maybe a 60 mesh. Let me just get them in the right order. 80, 60, 80, 100. I don't need all of them. I'm just putting them in the right order. 150. I'm going to grind them to, I don't hate 200, but I think 150 will be fine. So I'm going to do 80, 100, and 150. And you'll see what, you. this will start making sense in a moment. And I forgot to get, do I need two end caps? Yes, I need to go get two end caps and then we'll start grinding. I 
like to draw I like to do my lump dry because although we are going to be using it we'll do a combination we'll start dry and we do want to put on some eye protection because that here's my stylish hat I'm wearing eye protection so let us start here And I like to, I use a baggie to kind of keep things contained. So I'm just going to put a little tiny hole in this bag. And that will keep the thousands of shards of glass from, there we go. Stick this through like that. And I'm just going to start, we'll see if we get this all done. There we go. Stick you through. There we go. Now... We're going to lift up a little bit. There we go. So we got our little guys in there. And I'm just going to start. Grinding it. I don't hate that. Do I even need to stick it through there? Yeah. There we go. And if you take a Ricky Frank enameling class, Ricky Frank is a phenomenal uh, enameling artist. Old school, great guy. He, he lives in Atlantic, Atlanta. <laughs> Atlantis. He lives in Atlantis. He's a great teacher. He used to do only lump enamel. So every single color he used, he was doing this. Um, I'm not sure if he's still doing that because lump enamels are getting a little harder to find. But if you ever took a Ricky Frank enameling class, you know of which I speak. He's such a great guy. And his enamels are just so vibrant. There we go. I'm making a mess. Now I'm going to see where we are. Get a little bit more. There we go. Now I've made a mess, which is par for the course. And I'm usually I don't make as much of a mess. But, you know, I'm having... Just having fun here. Just having fun. There we go. And what I'm going to do is. Oh, hey, good night. Thanks for stopping by Hydrochronic. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see, perhaps see you tomorrow. All right, so we've got 150 mesh, 180, and you know I guess I could do this. Let's do whoop, cancel. That and that. There we go. There we go. I don't know if this is helpful to see me and. Rubber band around the plastic. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I can see how a rubber band would be really helpful. I don't have one here, um, but I usually um, am more prepared when I'm going to do this. So, and I, I basically just start putting it in here, and I'm just going to sift it, and things are going to fall down. There we go. And then we have a little bit... And everything that's still in here is going to, oh, I made a big mess. Oh, it's because I didn't put the end cap on the bottom. That's fine. Duke. So this is the perfect enamel right there. See, I'm going to stick it in there. We have the end cap. There we go. All right, Kilney. Kilney's letting me know that no one's been giving her any attention. There we go. So we're going to keep this and put this back in. Rubber band. That's very smart. And I wonder if I can just, let's just, yeah, it should come with like a little silicone cap or something would be really handy. 
But, you know, I was reading a story, a book from the year 1890 about uh, grinding your lump enamels, and they were just like, it's a pain in, they, they quite literally, this is a quote from the book, it's a pain in the butt, it's not a quote from the book, and it gets everywhere, and some people like to do it dry, some people don't, but really there's no easy way to do it, and it takes a lot longer than you think it should. And I really, I felt... 150 years later, I felt the author's emotions about about this. grind all of it. We'll see. I know it's getting kind of, it's a bit much. I was like, oh, we'll grind enamels while we're waiting. Oh, it's just the easiest thing to do in the world. So, no problem. 80, 100. There we go. It's not going to have bits of shards of glass everywhere. Needless to say, I do not go barefoot in my studio. So, I'm going to just it and give it a little shake. There we go. And now we're getting let's see, see all the way to the bottom. We'll get there. And to be honest, it goes fast once you get see we have a little bit ready to go at the bottom. It does actually go a lot faster. Um, so we're just going to just continue. We're going to do one more little round, then I'm going to set it aside, and I'll probably finish this tonight, later today, because we do want to kind of get enameling. We, I feel like I've probably, yeah, I'm going to just do a little bit more, All right, just a little, a few more. So I don't normally talk when I'm doing whatever. I'm just, I'm not trying to make excuses. But here I am. closer let's just sift what we have and I bet to be honest I bet that our pieces are ready to go in the kiln or else I'm at least ready to admit that admit defeat with this I usually do the tiniest amount but I was like oh I love this color so much I'm going to do a huge fucking chunk of it so, yeah, of course that's going to take 30 minutes. So, let's see. We're getting closer. And I'm going to set that aside and finish this later. Well, maybe we'll do a little bit more while things are cooling. So, let us go to the kiln and fire some things. Does that sound like a good idea? Solo over here. Now let's go to the kiln. Let's see what's gonna go on. Yeah, we're just going to do it. We're going to do it. No, 
see what's going on now. If you let these, if you let this glue dry overnight, you don't. It never really flares up. But because we didn't let it really air out, sometimes you get like a little tiki torch situation, and. I don't think with these smaller ones we're going to get that because we didn't use that much glue. But with the bigger one we may. And just remember, if anything ever catches fire in your kiln, it's okay. Just don't open the door. It'll put itself out, it'll use up all the oxygen in the kiln, and it'll be fine. I mean, I guess if it's something huge, maybe worry about it, but not something small. So, But you don't want to pull it out until all that glue has had an opportunity to burn away because you'll notice I don't know if you could tell that it turned black and this is where we are with the temperature we're still I'm not going to pull it out until all that black residue has burnt away that's really what I'm trying to say I'm going to fire them in three batches instead of two just to give that those two little landscape earrings a little bit more time to dry and there we go you can't really see what's going oh there it is a little bit of flame up let's just let it burn itself out you heard that little I didn't even realize things were catching fire like that in the kiln until I finally got a kiln that had a window in it. And I was surprised. I'm like, what?
Yes. Hooray. Now, what are we doing? Yes. Well, I mean, you could get unleaded lump enamels. It's just the form of the question is, is that leaded enamel? It is leaded enamel. And yeah, I probably should be wearing a thing, uh, but I am not. So, but yes, you can get unleaded or leaded enamel in lump, unlump, get little tiny, tiny bits of it. And does the powder sellers state the temperature? Sometimes, and mostly not, no. Uh, but they'll give you a range, and the range is just huge. The range will be, um, actually, let me grab my Thompson Enamel workbook. That might be a quick little helpful thing. We're gonna, I'm going to finish grinding that enamel later because I've made a huge mess in my work area, which doesn't please me. So we'll just cover that, deal with it later, and move you out of the way as well. And we don't need that. And what was I going to do? Oh, the Thompson enamel thing. We're just waiting for things to cool, and then we're going to get started on a little bit of color. We have an hour left of the stream. So if we could get a little bit of color on these pieces, I think we would all rest a little easier tonight. <laughs> so I know that I would. Um, you forget, you know, I'm fooling around, I'm doing the streaming or whatever, not quite getting as much done as I normally do. So, but that is fine. I actually did budget the whole weekend for this. So I kind of, the lizard brain in me knew that this was gonna take a lot longer than I thought. So. Yeah, oh, I was going to get the, let me get the Thompson workbook. Sorry, that took a little while. So let us do this. And we have, this is the Thompson enamel workbook. I actually, this is, unfortunately, enamel work supply company doesn't 
exist anymore. It was a great company. It was where I bought all my initial enamels. This is this is the the thing that I bought when I first started enameling and you could see I would buy I would see what I would buy, what I would want and I eventually got every single one of these colors. But you can see with this book, it does include some basic temperatures and these are indeed in Fahrenheit so but you can see it's a pretty big range like 1350 to 1550. Uh, I tend to, to try to under fire mine as much as I can get away with um, and I like this particular book it's probably not available anymore but she she marked she did a lot of um, notes which I really appreciated beautiful on silver can yellow with repeated firings oh yeah that's the RF1 white opal 1400 to 1600 so it's a harder um, color and so that was just really handy and I'm not sure that they do that much anymore but it's a really big range and you can see that and then also this is available uh, but this is probably this is more just about what is enamel um, if you're interested in the science of it. And I thought they had the list of their enamels with the melting temperatures in here. That's what I was looking for. It doesn't really matter, but you can still buy this workbook somewhere. I bet you can buy it at thompsonenamel.com. Incredibly handy. Even if you don't care about, if you're just interested in what glass is, um, it's a really good kind of a primer of what is like, the different kinds of enamel and a little bit of science behind it and oh here it is temperature conversion no that's metric oh that could be handy c to f uh, but handy so but if you can find it it's really going to be mostly you're going to have to take your own notes so but you can also if I, i'll do a plug a shameless plug for enamel art supply i get no money from them but they have these really great little cards with pictures of their samples. I really wish that these were sorted by color. <laughs> That's my one criticism and not number. I want to see all the pinks together, but still very, very handy uh, if you are not sure what you want. So that again is enamelartsupply.com. Very friendly, great company. And these are all Japanese enamels here. So, and you can, I think you might have to buy this, but it's just a couple bucks. So that is that and i bet that that was enough and we are ready to start some color are you ready to start some color i know i am and i'm going to take one moment because i'm not used to working so chaotically I, i'm pretty methodical in my approach so i'm just taking a moment to clean my space and get rid of the things that I don't need at the moment. Don't need that. Definitely don't need that. Scooch over. We never did need that. Put that over there. We're done with the sifter. Pick out new ones of those. And now we're just going to pick out our colors. We're going to need that. And all right, let me just put this away and go get our pieces and we will start the color. Oh, thank you, Kim. Nice, nice comment. Many fun and educational things. Well, I do spend a lot of time thinking about enamels. All right. Those can go there. Now we are ready to start our color. Let me just take this and get this. This is blue everywhere. There we go. Now, I think we'll start with, let me get this out of the way. Got a nice clean work surface. And I definitely 
am going to take a moment. We're going to start probably with these little guys. And trust me, I'll get, I got to get set up. These are pink and they are, let's just refresh our memory. They're going to be this shades of blushy, blushy pinks. If you know anything about pink enamel, you know that pink enamel can be challenging to work with because it tends to be reactive to silver, which means that when it touches silver, it turns yellow, which is not a great look, for, especially when you're a lovely pink. Not every pink is like that. The very pale pinks, some of them, work beautifully. You can see this is lovely, but you can see these two pinks, you can see right on the end, the tip, see how they're orange, yellow? That's where they're touching the silver, the bare silver. And so with that in mind, I made these bases deeper than I made these bases. I made these bases the depth of, uh, I don't know, 18 gauge, which is more than 20 gauge. So thicker, deeper to give me a little bit of extra wiggle room so I can put a nice barrier of color down. So I'm just going to pull, you know, so we're basically going to be doing this situation. And we also have a little bit of green. So let me grab this water looks nice and clean. I've got some water here. Let me get a piece of paper towel. Got some paper towel, a nice brush. It's a good time to get a good brush. I'm going to start with this brush looks nice. And let's get, this is our baby pink that we just washed. I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to get two empty cups. Now we're back to being mellow again. Mellow. All the craziness is now behind us. And it's just smooth sailing. We have, this is a gorgeous N14 Ninomia. And we do have to do a little mini wash on some of these because I didn't wash them today. This is one of those pinks that is made of gold. So you can see that it is, looks like it's white, but it is this color. So you can see we have to be careful because you're not going to be able to know where it is sometimes. I'm getting it out, but we're actually not going to use that in the first coat anyway. And then Aoki, which is my magic unicorn. My magic unicorn color. If you ever want to be my best friend in the whole world, and I will be, I love you forever, you find me some of this color. Aoki 105B. Or let me buy it from you. I'll pay any amount. Any amount. Because uh, when I have probably a couple ounces of it, and when it is gone... That might be it for this color in my lifetime. So I only washed a little bit of it. But you still have to use it. I'm going to use every last grain of that Aoki. It's not so precious. Well, maybe I'll say, no, I'm just going to use it. And when it's gone, it's gone. I wish I had some lump of that. And then I would sleep with it under my pillow. That's how lovely it is. All right, we also need some greens. We're going to grab our little just for this tiny little nibble at the end. Look at this, this blue got itself everywhere. Nice job. Uh, just a little tiny bit of that, a little tiny bit of this. Wait, yeah, I guess this one is good. And it's important to just, just slow down. Slow down when you hit colors. Oh, uh, the question is, that is a very good question. The uh, Do I use, because I normally use 20 gauge and 20 gauge. Remember, 20 gauge is 0.812 millimeters. Uh, but no, when I do, because I don't want it to be too thick. Not that you would even really be able to tell. I do a 22 gauge base. Unless it were really huge, and then I might do 20. But for earrings, I want them to be a little bit more lightweight. So I used a 22 gauge 22 gauge is 0.644. You see, I have a cheat sheet over there. So that is a good question. But you could do whatever you want. I like the thickness of the 20 and the 20. You could do real thin. Um, 
you get to do whatever you want. And I'm just going to do a quick little mini wash on these. And then we will get an amylene. I'm starting with the easy ones. So yeah, it's, we have an hour. So we're going to do some color today, a lot of color tomorrow, and all of the grinding and polishing and finishing work tomorrow. So that will be, that'll be good. So I thank you for bearing with me with all this camera shenanigans. <laughs> and I do have a new microphone. I just haven't had, I haven't been able to get it to work with my iPhone. I need, I need the right connector. So it is a work in progress. So that is the plan. So I'm going to be streaming again tomorrow at 10 a.m. So do join me if you are so inclined to see this through to the bitter, bitter end. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be streaming. I am definitely streaming on Christmas Day. Is that crazy? If you're bored or sad um, and just want to chat, I'm going to be making sample strips. So because I am not going anywhere for Christmas. At the last minute, I thought I should go to Cleveland to visit my family, but it was $2,000. And that's like literally basic economy flights. And so, I mean, I love my parents, but, and I just saw them. I quite literally just saw my parents, I, you know. <laughs> oh, we never see you. You saw me like four weeks ago. Um, but, and I don't like Christmas anyway. It's too too much emotion, so many feelings. So, but yes, yeah, so I will be streaming on Christmas Day, but I may not be streaming Monday through Friday because I have to get some big pieces done that I just need to really focus on. And there are things that you've seen me do already, so they're not that exciting. So, oh, this one's looking a little peakish. We'll make it work though. A little resistant to the water. But I think we don't use that much of it. And it's important to keep these pinks in the proper order because it's hard to know what they look like based on what the enamel grains look like. So, but I don't even really need that one right now, but it's good to get it washed. You'll notice I spend a lot of time washing enamels. So I like to have vivid clarity. This is called my mini wash. You saw the maxi wash and now this is the mini wash. All right, good, good, good. We've got this little guy. Let's grab. We might as well get Oh, do we not have our, oh, here it is. This chartreuse, this is my, one of my favorite, look at this, it almost glows. This is an old Thompson color, 737 chartreuse. Mm, it's adorable, I love it, you can eat it. So good, so good. So we've got that, and we are ready to, are we, are we ready to add the color? All right, I gotta adjust so I can look through my microscope. So give me a moment. I don't need to take my glasses off just yet. Let's just, and I'm going to have to go solo here. There we go. Say goodbye to me. Let me look in my, and I'll adjust the light as well. Probably, actually, I liked having the colors on the left-hand side. All right, so we've got that. It's good. Let's see. Where are you? Oh, maybe a little extra light. We begin. There we go. Let's deal with this. lock that. Let's get my gray color. Let's see if we can do that. Sorry. 
there we go better that gray card or is it better who knows who knows that's good now we've got our little colors right here we'll just let's make sure that they are a matched set there we go nice now after all of that IT specialist, I know. No, oh my God. You should see all the money I've wasted trying to get this set up to work. Um, it's ridiculous and in, infuriating. Because in, I think, I feel like I'm pretty tech savvy, but apparently I am not. Let me just scooch that down just a little bit. Hold on. Alrighty. Now, let me just tell you something. We have one coat of that enamel on here. That is not enough to protect the enamel from the silver. So with this one, and this is why we did it, we did it extra, is I'm going to put a layer of this baby pink right here. It plays perfectly. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's wonderful doesn't react to silver so I'm gonna put that down over all of the pink just a flat coat of it fairly thick a nice uniform coat but even and then I'll do the little nibbles of green and we'll fire it and then we'll get to the actual you know shading so you're gonna be like why is she just doing flat pink that is why I'm gonna move all of these colors over here and I have to remember to hold my enamel cup so I'm not blocking the camera and I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna do all four at the same time you can see I'm like I'm just putting a little water in little water little water little water but yeah just just like we started with the glue for this I like to start with something basic, so that's why we're starting with these little guys. So, yeah, oh, nice job out of the gate, making a mess. Just a little dab. I'm gonna scooch over a little bit because I can actually see all four of them. There we go, and a little dollop right in there there we go there we are done boom all right and then a little bit that was the pretty chartreuse this is another chartreuse this is a nino mia and yeah i'm doing three shades just in this tiny little area so i like me my color options. Get you right in there. Just like that. And a little. Oh, I turned. Didn't I? Got to turn the kiln back on. I was giving it a little break. Once I get this green on there, and then another Nino Mia. I am. It's harder to find the Nino Mia these days, but. It's kind of the enamel that I started on. Hold on, there's like a brigade going by. There's probably gonna be eight more. Yeah. <laughs> like I say, this is Castle Street. This is kind of like, not the main drag of town, but it's the best drag. I don't know. <laughs> so if you have a fancy pants motorcycle and you live in Wilmington, you're probably gonna be driving it down Castle Street on Saturday afternoon. And you know what? I don't blame you. So there we go. That is good. Now a nice even coat. And, oh, but you know what I did? I mean, speaking of technology and kind of splurgy, my second camera, which I don't have on right now, 
is actually an iPad mini. I've never had an iPad before because I'm using Switcher, which is an app that you have to use. It, it's only through iPhones, whatever. And because all the other apps were far too complicated and I don't have, I don't have cameras, you know, like real cameras. I only have my phone. And so I needed something that I would be able to stream really on my phone and not set something up with my laptop and different cameras because I was, you know, unable to get, you know, I bought a, like a pretty inexpensive streaming camera and it was trash. So I kind of got onto Switcher because I could use my, I just put it water on there. I'm just going to put a nice even coat over all of it. Um, And so I ended up, and I borrowed my husband's regular iPad. It's kind of, it was a full size. And I was like, I had it like duct taped to, it was ridiculous. Um, but I just got this iPad mini. And besides it working really well as a camera, I just love it. Oh my gosh, it's so, it has like this little drawing pencil. Yeah, you had to pay an extra hundred bucks for that, but I got it. And I've been using it as a sketch pad. And I am in love with my iPad mini and I never thought I would, you know, I've always been a PC person, but you know, I like to lay in bed and just, and I made a point on that iPad mini, my email is not hooked up to it. Facebook is not hooked up to it. Um, I mean, it can get to the internet, but it's not, that's not what it's there for. And I need to fuss with this wire. Let's just, I should have fussed with these wires before I got too far. Let's just tuck you in. Oh, am I gonna lose it? That's all right. That's fine. There we go. It's all right. I came undone a little bit, but that's, it's a little long, maybe that's the problem. No, you're fine. Let's make sure these wires, before I get any farther, let me just make sure, you know, usually I, <laughs> I fuss with the wires before I start adding color, but let me look. Visually, you're doing fine. This one looks good. Good. That one looks good. Press it down. Press it down. Oh, that one came undone. That's all right. That's right, because we're we're putting we're not doing any blendings. Um, that's fine. Good enough. Now, let's get this blushy pink going, and then. I'll let I know oh, hold on just like that. All right, hold on. Just that's fine. I'm gonna there we go. Let's just Putting a nice even coat. And you can see I put a lot of water down, so the capillary action is just pulling those enamel bits into the crevasses. Just. Although, you know. No, no, I'm not going to switch color because I only need one pair of pink. I could do that really vivid purple. No, no, maybe no, no, because I don't actually want to get into that bracket of that shade of purple and I don't really need a purple. So just do that. Duct tape, yeah. 
what was Gorilla Tape? It was, yeah, it was really good. It was Gaffer's Tape. It was meant for that, you know, holding stuff in place. I'm going to fuss with this wire after I get all this stuff down. But I just, I gave myself permission the last couple of days not to fret about my setup. And I just, I had spent too much time. Not that it's not important, obviously. And there's nothing I can do about the internet connection here. It is a kind of crappy Wi-Fi. I, you know, it comes free with the building. Um, so to be honest, I'm surprised it is as good as it is. So too much water here. I'm going to wick out some of this moisture. It's just, I don't want that green to get sucked into that. There we go. Might as well get you guys while we're over here. There we go. Oh, I'm going to turn on the kiln. Getting closer. I cannot believe. All right. The kiln is on, so we should be able to get. This. Oh, now it's not. Now I need more water. Erp. There we go. It's like the dance of too much water, not enough water. And quite frankly, I'm always like pink. Whenever somebody orders something pink in my store, and I have to make it. it, stresses me out because I'm like, oh crap, pink. I like selling things that have already been made because there is a certain level of uncertainty with all pinks. Sometimes they just go yellow and there's, you know, I'm not gonna sell, you know, I, I hate to make something twice. So I'm kind of making two just in case. That's my ulterior motive. But, you know, I had such lofty ideas of, like, just making so much, having inventory. But then I get sidetracked by wanting to make other kind of fun projects. And then, you know, there we are. But that way, if both pairs come out, I'll have a pink pair. And then I won't be stressed out. If somebody buys a pink pair of lotus blossom earrings, I'll be like, great. You've made my day. So... Let's see. Okay. Oh, that that's the one that came out. Whoop. I see because I didn't let this one, I could have fired these a little longer. The wires are very, very, very lightly attached. Um, and that all harkens back to the fact that this clear flux enamel is a little bit higher melting temperature didn't have as much time to melt and kind of sink in to the enamel but that is fine because I'm going to take care of it in the next firing let me just scooch you up and I'm going to fuss with this wire I know it looks like you, you don't know what it looks like but I'm just going to oh what is that we'll get these little yeah, we're at about 900 Fahrenheit. We're, we're gonna just get this thing high. That's fine. A little bit there. Very light. There we go. All right, that's nice one coat down and i'm just going to what is that is that a speck no we'll find out that's good that looks good all right we're going to let me get one two three 
four. I'm going to take a moment and quickly clean my trivet. We're gonna go put this under the lamp and I think we'll do let's get a coat on the pendant because we have the same thing happening we have one of those blues is a little bit reactive so I'm gonna put kind of just a baby blue down on that so I'm gonna go put this under the lamp and we'll get started on the next piece Or, yes, do we? It's pretty complicated. All right, so we've got this little guy. And if you remember, I actually have a photo somewhere of this piece. It doesn't matter, we'll get it later. But here is generally the color things is gonna be a really dark background. And it's actually, interestingly enough, this particular shade of green and some of the really aqua warm blues. Usually blues are not reactive to silver, but with the exception of some of the really, really warm, is it blue, is it green? They tend to be a little reactive and it's irritating because they don't immediately react. They react for three, four firings in and they get blotchy. So trust me, don't want that. So let us, let's bring this little guy over here and we don't need any of those other colors. So I'm just gonna get them out of the way and we're going to, let's just stick you right there. So I'm gonna take a moment, got a little bit of yellow, but that's all right because our colors are kind of warm. Make sure everything is pressed down. Hmm. And that, 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 and that. And push you down. That looks good. And this one is, we need to get some colors. So let's take a moment, go to auto focus. I'm gonna lift up just a little bit. There we go. And we'll just flip around and doop, doop. I know, <laughs> in case you forgot who was, who was doing this. Now let's get some colors. We have this 546 blue, which we're gonna use. We're going to, let me get you out of the way. There we go. That is good. We don't need any of these pinks. We're gonna keep them over here. And we want our baby blue that we got, that we washed. Got that. Let me grab. This is kind of a blue green. I think that'll be all right. I'm not going to use these N55s. I'm going to dump them. I'm going to thank them. And like I say, I think this aqua will be. No, I'm not going to trust it. We're really going to just. We're not going to do any of our aquas. So see these colors. Um, I'll get the, these, these colors 
And you can't even tell by looking at the samples because the samples look lovely. But this just keep burn this this certain shade into your retina. Um, it's kind of a blue oh, and especially this color. So basically see this this shade. Uh, kind of a chrome chrome green tends to get reactive and it doesn't show up in this is just too too far and you can see a little bit of splotchiness right around here and a little bit right in here but it gets more pronounced after the second firing and so I always put down a nice layer of pale blue first just as an insurance policy so we're not going to do any of those shades we're just going to do a lovely shade of blue pretty much over the whole thing and that's why we're going to get it and I think this one's fine not all of them are like that but enough of them to make your day sad so we've got we're just going to do these three colors across the whole thing as if it were monochrome and then we'll bring we'll introduce all of the colors into the next one so that is the plan. Oh, we have 30 minutes. Let's see if we can get this done in 30 minutes. And let's see if we can. There we go. Right there. That's good. Let's move these colors out of the way. And. I'm going to start by just putting a coat of baby blue. I guess I could. No. Yep, yep, yep. I'm having second thoughts. It's all good. We'll start. It's fine. We're going to start probably. This is one of those ones where I spent a little bit of time agonizing. Is that a fair assumption? I'm just gonna put, and I'm not going very thick at all. This is almost like just half a layer. Just putting this darker color down first. Oh, that was 546. Okay. Okay, buddy. Let's get this blue. Our kiln is kiln is up to temperature, so that's good. I'm just gonna put a nice coat of this blue down everywhere. And it's really just a healthy barrier, a prophylactic barrier. That's a word. A little bit in there, a little bit in there, a little bit in there. That's fine. I'm going to do that over all of it. I think that's fine. And then we'll add, we'll bring in our shades. We'll finesse it in the next one. I think that'll be fine like that. Right in here. A little bit of water would be good. Just I think I like starting with the darker. 46. Oh, hold on. 
Oh, he was doing a wheelie. Oh, God, he's going to kill himself. Nice. Kids these days. Kids these days. That. I have a daydream of retiring to the Azores because I bet it is a lot more quiet. So if you live in the Azores, you can come invite me to visit. A little bit. I'm going very light with this. Because remember, this isn't extra thick. This is just a regular amount. So there is, you know, you run the risk of not having enough. There. Hold on, I think they're going to go uh, come around again. Just a little bit. Oh, first time chatter. Sitting at my jeweler's bench watching this fun <laughs> Lulu call. Welcome, Lulu call. Thank you for chatting. I'd like Twitch to <laughs> to turn into a jeweler, a jewelry bench. We should get all the jewelry artists because I can see that the makers and crafting area is, is not quite as many people as are playing Fortnite. So. And here's a fun, oh, I'm gonna tell you a funny story. You know why I'm doing this, like literally? why I'm a jewelry a, a enamel artist well I mean I went to art school and blah 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 and I always wanted to be an artist but I didn't know what kind of artist I wanted to be and I kind of sucked at everything um so you know I graduated from college and you know bummed around a bit had a bunch of lame jobs and I was playing a lot of um I was, this is a video game store I was playing EverQuest I don't know if you know what that is it's kind of a medieval um, open world where you just wander around and you do whatever you want in this game. Hold on, the motorcyclists are going to have to go through him again. Let's see if he's wheeling. They're not motorcycles, they're dirt bikes. I'm less impressed. Or should I be more impressed? I don't know. But anyway, so I was playing EverQuest and every spare moment of my time and I didn't even like fighting or because you could fight you know orcs and whatever I was just so I hated I didn't like to group with people I just like to I snuck around like Necrocos Island or whatever it was called and collected coffee beans and I brewed coffee like did this crafting thing inside the game for hours hundreds of hours crafting these different I started with coffee so I'd sneak around and collect coffee beans and then go to my little crap my virtual crafting station and literally it felt like it was ridiculous and I had kind of an epiphany I'm like what am I doing like none of this stuff that I'm putting all this hours and it didn't really even take that much skill I would just but it was fun I guess and I was like you know I think I should make something in real life <laughs> and so I went and took an enameling class and that changed the course of my life. So there you go. Oh, first time chat. 
Paige Z. Oh, hello. I guess that's, I see it. Some sort of like a, a little guy. Oh, yeah. I was like, well, when I was looking at streaming, I, they're trying to make it better. I mean, I think that it's grown. It's definitely grown in the last year. Um, they put some money into trying to get people to do the makers and crafting, but it's still not, it's not the cool. We're not in the cool corner <laughs> at all of Twitch. We are in quite literally, I don't even know, no man's land, but what you going to do? All right. I'm just going to coat up blue down here and I'm going to fire, dare I put those pink things in? You know what? I'm going to go throw those pink lotus blossom earrings into the kiln and multitask. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it. All right, now don't let me forget, I got something in the kiln. So two minutes from now, if I haven't gotten up, I don't know, start doing a bunch of exclamation points in the comments or something, like I would not see it. Um, but anyway, let me get a coat of blue done. I bet I can get, I can see the kiln from here. Kiln, I'm thinking kiln, kiln, kiln. No, but the reason I do, I mean, I knew about Twitch. I mean, it wasn't a place, my husband is in, he makes video games for a living. So he's very familiar with twitch and but my niece was telling me that she was spending hours and hours apparently there's some conservationist that's restoring paintings somewhere and they would spend hours and hours watching this um scientist or uh, you know a person who was restoring paintings with a tiny tiny miniature q-tip hours and hours removing old bits of varnish off of a painting and I thought well certainly if you're willing to watch that this can't be any less <laughs> interesting <laughs> so that was kind of my thought and also I was like I just wanted to try something new and really I do like the focus of it because I can't be doom scrolling if I'm on twitch so this is really a lot it's really more for me and I'm actually surprised that anyone's watching so <laughs> And I'm not forgotten. Hold on. It's 13, 1398. Or right, it's 1400. I'm going to stroll over to the kiln because I don't, I shouldn't, and I meant to, I should get like a timer. Those are out of the kiln. I'm just going to get this coat of enamel on this. And then we're probably going to call it a day for today. Uh, didn't quite get, you know, I guess I was being a bit ambitious. A bit ambitious. So, but tomorrow, it goes pretty fast. So let me just tell you, if you're not familiar with this process, this is the first coat of colored enamel. So imagine that we have four more layers, four, four total layers of, of this process. We have two coats of pure color. The third coat will be some color depending on, you know, the intensity, if we want to make it more intense or darker. And then in other areas, we'll switch to a clear enamel or a pale enamel. And then the fourth and then maybe the fifth coat will just be really light shades to get us all the way to the top. I know it looks like we're filling these things up, but you'll be surprised at how much this glass just melts down. So, and I'm just being a little bit more careful. I want to get this nice and even, but not 
should have maybe done a darker shade. There we go. And I have to be more careful when I'm grinding and polishing this. Remind me tomorrow when I'm grinding and polishing it. I don't want to over grind it. Because there we go. And I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna do this because this is gonna be that ultramarine blue, which is fine, so I don't see any reason to put any enamel over here for now. So I'm just just because this is where that green is gonna be. This is gonna be ultramarine, which is fine, so quite honestly, that's we're gonna fire it like that. And let us go. I'm gonna go put this under there. Let's bring our pink pieces over and see where we are and we'll kind of regroup and talk. Oh, and we're unstable anyway, so I'm probably gonna Here's our blushy pinks. Let's have a look and see where we are. Let us see where we are. Move that over. Let me get my, like, I need to see what's going on too. Still a little hot, but you can see, oh, look, I can see it looks a little warm. I'm, let me just go over here, solo. Solo. There we go. Say goodbye to me. I'm going to gray card it. Excuse me. Just to get the right color. There we go. Can never get the right light, but you can see. Oh, it's still a little warm. Look how this blushy pink. It's a nice base of pink enamel. So it looks really pretty. And we're going to do all tomorrow. We'll get our shades of warm pinks and our kind of fuchsia pink right in there and it's going to be they're going to be very sweet they're hot they're still a little hot <laughs> but I don't have many feelings left in my fingers anyway so that is where we're at and I will go ahead and fire that other piece and so we'll start with color it's going to be all day color tomorrow so remember we're going to be doing this this is going to be a fun one i almost want to i'm not going to start i'm not going to do any color tonight we'll get these little guys we've got the landscape so we're definitely it's going to go pretty fast i think you'll be surprised at how fast well i don't know if you'll be surprised i don't even know if you'll think it's fast who knows who knows so that is all let's do this boop and boop I know, scooch over. Wait, wrong way. Scooch this way? Yes. Anyway, so I think we are done for the day. And it is yeah, a little bit early, but I'm not going to add another coat of anything. So we will continue with the color tomorrow. Um, thank you guys so much for spending your Saturday afternoon or middle of the night or whenever it is with me. Oh, let me scooch around and i will see you tomorrow thank you John. thank you thank you for joining me so tomorrow at 10 a.m eastern standard time and don't forget if you are interested in videos that are tutorials step by step with actual instructions please subscribe to my vimeo channel there's a link and you can get it for video or you can also subscribe to my Twitch channel. Still at 31 followers. I guess that's just where we're going to be. So that is also appreciated. But if you have to choose one, subscribe to my Vimeo channel. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, you'll get more out of it because this technically would be free. But you'll get extra videos if you subscribe to that. So that is good. And also, if you're interested in buying jewelry, I also have kits. All of the Vimeo tutorials, not all of them, most of them come with additional.
kits of colors and supplements that you can purchase to make along with the videos. So that's something to, I also sell jewelry, real jewelry that you can purchase. And I sell that on my website as well. You can buy it from either place is good. So again, let me know if you have any questions and thank you guys so much for supporting me and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.